What's up guys, this is Mike Loris and the picture coming out way too fast for me, but Star Series Season 3, this is going to be the retry versus Kharkiv. Haven't cast any of the retry, but it does have PGG, who is ex-Moscow 5, who is part of the Moscow 5 squad during the International 2, uh, up against Kharkiv. Kharkiv, uh, we've seen quite a bit, our style's new team. But the picks already flying out, actually, those, I just like went through the bands, then they all insta-picked all of these things, so it kind of was overwhelming, but Wisp... Being banned out, Kharkiv, known to use those, that Wisp to do uh, very silly strategies. Other than that, rather standard. Kharkiv picking up the Naga Siren, Templar Assassin, as well as Chen and TA. Naga Siren is a combo that we've been seeing quite a bit, uh, provided that they both get through the first ban phase, of course. But together, they have a very solid late game. But uh, they also have a pretty good mid, mid game for the team, because Templar Assassin does do a lot of damage. Chen will shore up that early mid game portion of Kharkiv, so they do have like uh, all the stages of the game kind of covered. Templar Assassin will do a lot of damage in the early mid stage of the game, and then just really play with the rest of her team to allow Naga Siren that space to get her big items up, so that later on when Templar Assassin, uh, when her refraction doesn't necessarily do everything for her, she'll be able to you know have someone to rely on. The retry, on the other hand. First two picks, Enigma and Tidehunter, they're going for a very, very big team fight. We're going to see if they want to stick to this route and just keep on picking up more and more AoE ultimates. It's risky, though, because Naga Siren does have that Song of the Siren, which pretty much destroys uh, any team fight oriented lineup, provided you don't chain off your uh, stuff perfectly. If you allow for that Song of the Siren to come out, well, then your entire lineup is pretty much screwed. But the retry, um, because they're such a new team, don't know anything about them, which should be fun, right? We get to see a completely new team. But hopefully uh, PG is going to be on that Enigma so we can see some legendary black holes. You guys know what I'm talking about. It'll be awesome. The retry, taking their sweet-ass time. They're going to go for Luna, actually. Not a bad carry hero if you're going to orient yourself towards that team fight. Of course, Naga Siren is pretty much what you want. I mean, that, that ultimate's ridiculous, but... Uh, Luna's Eclipse, also pretty good for Team 5 potential. It's a huge amount of magic damage, and if you could somehow kill the creeps beforehand, you know, pick up some sort of uh, different AoE ultimate, uh, rather than that Ravage, of course, then that should be able to clear out the creeps so that Luna could just have uh, free Eclipse bounces, or not bounces, free Eclipse beams. Karkiv going to ban out of support as well as a potential laner in the Tinker. Three try on the other hand, knowing that Karkiv need a couple more support heroes, gonna ban out the Shadow Shaman, who's been seeing quite a lot of play. And as well as the uh, Broodmother, so banning out that long lane. Karkiv, they do need another support hero. What they want to choose is, I don't know, probably some anti team fight, so probably some lockdown. Windrunner is gonna give them a little bit of stun, so they do have the Naga Siren as well as the Windrunner for that stun, but Shock Shot not always the most reliable. Chen's stun uh creep stun also not the most reliable. Especially when there's a whole bunch of black holes and ravages flying around. You can't really count on having those creeps up. But retry. They do have the Tide Hunter to kind of be support, but usually Tide Hunter is more in a four position rather than a five. So they would like to have a really hard support. Something with a lot of team fight. Mm, I mean, like, Crystal Maiden does have that ultimate. Probably going to be Disruptor, though, I, ha I have to say. They pick up, they have that giant static storm, shut down the Naga Siren from using that Song of the Siren. Plus, that'll cl cl clear off the creeps pretty well, but they're going to go for the Pugna. So that's a uh, different amount of team fight, really. Like, Pugna, not really seen all that much. Usually seen when you want to go very aggressive for pushing. But that Nether Ward is a pretty good tool preventing the enemy team from actually getting the engagement that they want. And like those constant shots of, uh, I don't know, the nether ward. It, it shoots things with green stuff. Ultimate, definitely not really a team fight spell. But that blast could clear off creep waves like nobody's business. A blast combined with the ravage will clear off any creep wave there is, which will pave the way for a free eclipse. Kharkiv, Windrunner on the top lane, most likely. TA mid, Naga Siren, bot with whoever is this going to be this last pick and Chen in the jungle. Probably going to be how they lane their heroes. Retry on the other hand, Nigba, almost 100% going to go in that jungle. Other than that, they have a lot of freedom to move people around. Pugna not really seen all that much, so we could go for support, which is probably what we're going to be seeing. Retry uh, could go for a solo mid hero, and then just have a tri lane, Tidehunter, Luna, Pugna. The thing is with Pugna, you kind of want to get a little bit of farm onto him just because he's so naturally soft. 
You want to get him a little bit of bulk. You want to get him in those levels. But Karkiv are actually going to go for that disruptor pick as a support. Get that anti-team fight. They could slap that uh, Static Storm down before any of those big ultimates come. Well, that's a lot of walking distance that Enigma, Tidehunter, and Luna have to actually uh, you know, go through before they could get their combo off. Not to mention the glip Glimpse as well, helping to kill the uh, high movement speed heroes, Pugna and Luna. Very solid support pick from Kharkiv, and, uh, well, you know, Naga Siren, TA dealing the damage, everyone else to support. Pretty solid lineup overall. Retry, gonna go for the support Shadow Demon. So now their lanes are definitely gonna be a little weird. They might lane uh, Pugna solo mid, it's usually what you see in pubs. But anyway, the retry, they have some pretty substantial team fight. They also have some pretty good babysitting potential, so Luna could get really, really big. But Templar Assassin does have a lot of, uh, a decent amount of uh, clearing when Luna does pick up that Manda style. Anyway, though, we're going to get into this game. On the dire side, we have Jackal playing the Pugna. PG. Oh. PGG's not. No, wait, they're swapping. They're swapping. Um, well, Jackal's no longer playing the Pugna. PGG's playing the Pugna. We just stick. We just. We, ju we just zick. Playing the Shadow Demon. Okay, fair enough. Vamos Barca playing the Tide Hunter. Uh, Jackal is going to take up that Luna and Zver on the Enigma. Zever? Zever, that makes a little bit more sense. On the Enigma. Always want to fly on the Radiant side. Karkiv's team is going to be playing that Disruptor art style. Going to go on that Naga Siren once again. I feel like I always see him playing that. Dubas is going to be on the Chen. Solomid is going to be on stop. With Mag going on the safe lane, actually. So this Windrunner is going to have a much easier time. They're going to have an aggressively laned Chen from the looks of it. They're going to be up against a dual lane of Jackal as well as we just Zick. PGG is going to be soloing up the mid lane with Tidehunter on the bottom lane. He has a wheel stuck on his head. you got to get that checked out, man. doesn't look good for you. And with five clarities, the Enigma is most definitely going to go in the jungle. Already some sentry wards being put down. But I don't think Kharkiv actually want to block that pull camp. I mean, if they're just going to aggressively prevent them from pulling rather than passively using any wards to, you know, prevent that. If you begins. block off that camp, that's one more, one less creep camp that Dubas has to actually get something. Regen the rune spawning on the top lane, not actually going to be used at all, or most likely. Yeah, kill that regen rune. We're, we are seeing a little bit of movement here. Luna as well as we just zick Jackal on Luna. We move down to the bot lane. So definitely knew something was coming. They want this Tidehunter to be the one kind of getting shafted, and Tidehunter is not going to be happy about that, but taking one for the team. Mag, unfortunately for him, he's not going to have at an easy time as he thought he would. Dubas already picking up an Ursa Warrior. What kind of luck is that? He can go for a very easy kill on Tidehunter. Riptide was unfortunately picked up for Kharkiv, so they're not going to have that lockdown at l from level 1. They really need that if they're actually going to, you know, close the distance for that clap to happen. The boss is also going to spot off a centaur, so he does have potential there, and he's going to ward. You see, not p warding off the pole camp. Mag on the bot lane. As I said before, not going to have the best time. Once Jackal gets a couple points of Lucent Beam, once the uh, Disruption Soul Catcher combo comes into effect, then uh, Windrunner's got to be in a little, got to be a little bit cautious. In the mid lane, it's really hard to favor who's going to do better here. Simply because Pugna is seen so rarely, it's hard to evaluate how strong he actually is in lane versus Templar Assassin. But I have to say that I'm going to give this lane too unstoppable. I'm assuming it's unstoppable. I, have, I haven't lo even looked. I'm so fucking lazy. Unstop. Because really, Templar Assassin is able to outlane most people, and Pugna is really reliant on that blast. He doesn't have any of those uh, constant stream of damage spells like the Venomancer to burn through those refraction charges. So if those blasts get refracted, well, Pugna's just going to be out of mana. And Pugna, uh, one of, if not, I think he is the highest intelligence growth in the game. But even with that, if you're burning blasts for absolutely nothing in return, well, it's not exactly helping your cause, is it? Bottle is coming out to the TA. In the meantime, the bot lane, 4 of 1 on the Windrunner, 7 for 4 on the Luna. So as expected, that babysitting going to give the Luna a lot more than the Windrunner. But Windrunner, you know, they didn't really expect her to get all that much in the first place. 
Very early push on this top lane. Not the most damage with only one Chen Creep, but they're going to net this Tidehunter, but he does have a point of uh, anchor of uh, Kraken Shell plus Anchor Smash, trying to do a little bit of uh, saving for himself, but the right clicks might be enough. He does have a lot of minus armor now, zero armor in fact. I don't think there's going to be enough. There's two, one, there you go, Tide oh, is going to go down to that Ursa Warrior. And here comes Eever to watch the body of Tidehunter you know, decompose. But Karkiv diving very aggressively for that first blood on the Tidehunter. They did get it though, so, you know, results speak for themselves. Unfortunately, Anchor Smash level 1, Kraken Shell level 1 won't do all that much when you're taking that damage. Like, he's definitely the most bulky hero on the map at this point. You know, maybe for TA, for Fraction, but that's different. Uh, but, you know, so much damage constantly coming out. Not going to help him enough. In bot lane, Jacqueline Lee just stick. Take Jacking some creeps. I don't think he actually got that one actually. So come on, Jackal. Step up your game. So Mag's pulling even, not getting him all that much. But this lane is not really Karkiv's concern. What they really want is art style to get big. What they really want is the Templar Assassin to get big. And TA, nine times out of ten, he'll do just fine in that mid lane. So they want to make sure that art style is getting all the free time that he can. Always want to fly, get a spot off the Tidehunter as well as the Enigma. Going to cancel that clarity and try to move back. There is only one stun on that Enigma. Right clicks from Always want to fly. Pretty good. Thunder Strike as well. Kinetic Field. He wants to get this kill. But this Kinetic Field doesn't last for all that long. Chen is here for the Test of Faith. He's just trying to get his Centaur in close enough for one last hit. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it will be enough. And now the Tidehunter might be in a little bit of trouble. Stomp from the Centaur and the right clicks from the two support heroes. Doing quite a bit of damage to the Tidehunter. He probably will not go down. As Unless they dive this tower, which I don't think they will. That would definitely be suicide. Here comes a hasted Pugna, though. This could be a little bit of danger for Dubas. The right clicks from Pugna will hurt quite a bit. 64 damage. He does have level 2 blast as well. And Chen is completely spotted out. Should be pretty healthy, though. Here comes PGG, though. There's no gush on this Tidehunter. Dubas running straight through. But there's a kinetic field. PGG narrowly avoiding it. Net on him, however. It doesn't matter how fast you are. You are not moving anywhere. Our style is going to begin with right clicks. Stomp from Centaur as well. Tidehunter getting the deny, though. So it's a good, very good uh, distractionary play, I guess. But the Tidehunter might pay for that deny with his life. He is. Naga Siren going to get that kill. Zebra coming in. Lucky for him, the, entire, the entirety of Kharkiv is out of mana. But the retry, just sending everyone in one at a time. Didn't get any kills out of that. Did get the tower deny, which I suppose is... You know, it's just as valuable as a kill. They gotta really stop doing that. That's the TA with that refraction. Pretty pretty large counter to Pugna, actually. I don't know what I was expecting, honestly, but uh, Pugna, I mean, like, he's decent in, lane, in a solo lane, but he's definitely no TA. So, as expected, Templar has having a much better time than that Pugna, level 6 versus level 5. Of course, it doesn't really help when the Pugna goes off and dies, but TA, wow, doubling the creep score of Pugna. He's having the time of her life. Now Pugna might be in a little trouble. Kinetic Field can prevent him from running. Unstoppable is here with the huge hits from the Refraction. One more hit will be enough. Always Wanna Fly says, screw you, TA. I want this kill. I've earned another one. Now sitting at 203. This Disruptor is getting a lot of assist gold. Where did Mag go? Mag went back to the base. Okay, gonna get, pick up some teleportation scrolls, some boots. And probably just head back. Yeah, try to shut down Jackal as much as possible. But Karkiv is doing so well as far as their farming goes. Luna has to pull out some miracles later on. The Enigma is in the jungle, but he's going to be engaged upon. He's very low in HP. And here comes the Shadow Demon as well. Uh, oh, God. Brutal, brutal damage. Shadow Demon going to go down to the Templar Assassin. Zebra getting glimpsed back, and he's that's going to leave enough time for the right clicks to fly out. Garkiv getting the easy, easy picks on the retry. Kind of getting caught out of position. Not being able to fight as a team, and like... A Team fight comp is well and good and everything, but it kind of relies on you actually being together. Of course, it does help when Jackal uses Eclipse to, you know, insta-kill the Windrunner. Shadow Demon just chilling in the background. Didn't help at all for that one. Jackal's getting a solo kill, which is good. It's definitely what he needs. It's definitely what the, what the retry needs. They need Luna to get really big. They just need Tidehunter and Enigma to hit that level 6 mark. But they're still quite a ways away. 
Our style now going to get converged upon by a whole bunch of retry heroes. PGG looking for that disruption or decrepify. See, this is going to lead up into a blast. Stun from Zebra as well. Chen trying to send our style back. Will it be enough? It will be enough. Our style getting out by the scales of his fish. Uh, yeah. I don't Daya's know. Fish do have. Do, does she have teeth? I think Naga Siren does have teeth. The scales of her teeth, because she's a fish. You know, skin of the teeth would actually work. That, they all fish have skin. I don't know. Tried to be cute with that. Didn't work out. TA looking for a kill on the bot lane. She is going to spot out that Shadow Demon, but I'm pretty sure she wants the Luna. She's going to instantly teleport out. Should be fine. Good call by Luna. Recognizing there was no one there to actually stun. The Radiant Windrunner was clearly not, was near, clearly not in range. Not even close to being in range, so no shock shots flying out. She's going to get out of there. Art style with a friendly Ursa following him around. He's going to look towards the mid lane. PGG. Pugno. One of the lowest strength growths in the game, if I remember correctly. And he's going to run into an invisible art style. Not what you want to have happen, PGG. The right clicks from art style as well as this Ursa Warrior will begin. To Crepify on himself will try to buy himself a little bit of time. But TA swoops in for that kill. And now the Shadow Demon taking a ton of damage from this TA. Phase Boots on her will not allow the Shadow Demon to escape. He already did use his disruption. And he's only level 3 as well. So Kharkiv extend their lead 9-1. to one, Plus a tower on top of that. Gold advantage, experience advantage, substantially in Karka's favor. The retry, just not having a good game so far. Their lanes, in my opinion, were extremely weak. And like Tidehunter against that tri lane, there's no way for him to survive that. And of course, picking up the Pugna, I mean, like, it's diff definitely a different pick, but when you're laning against a TA, nothing is going to come out of that. It's impossible for Pugna. I just left the door open for some possibility by saying he had a chance, but honestly, wasn't expecting much. Now Tidehunter trapped in the connect field. Unstoppable is there with the meld as well as the refraction hits. Decrepify, though, from his friendly PGG. Unstoppable is going to have to close his distance. But with the face boots, he should be able to do it. Glimpse back is the Shadow Demon. He's going to take a lot of right-click damage, but he's not actually going to go down. Unstoppable not able to close the distance. Disruptor with the Thunderstrike is going to take him down, though. Karkiv getting yet another easy pick on the Shadow Demon. He's only like level, yeah, he's only level 4. He's in sad mode right now. Everyone from Kharkiv, Chen only level 5 actually, but uh, TA as well as Naga Siren. Those are the heroes that you really want to have the levels on. And lucky enough, those are the heroes that have the levels. Jackal, gonna run until always want to fly. Pop off that Eclipse. That's one dead Disruptor. Dubas is like, oh, it's a good thing I wasn't there. Better you than me. Art Style is gonna pick up a VIP booster. He could hold that just uh, as extra health. We could go for a Vanguard. And now, oh my god, Zeever taking a huge amount of damage from Unstoppable is going to be enough. Shackle Shout onto the Shadow Demon and a lash into a tree. Flying for Unstoppable to get a double kill. He's going to look towards his Tidehunter as well. No Ravage on him. So there's no way to actually stop these heroes from attacking. And Power Shot going to fly through. Fraction goes up. Shackle Shot going to slow down the Tidehunter just a little bit. He's going to buy Unstoppable enough time to bag himself a triple kill. And Karkiv just dominating this team versus the retry. Making it look so darn easy. And the only kills that they actually got were from the Luna, who didn't have any help. So the retry kind of failing a little bit at their team play. Getting caught out of position a couple times, and just, like when Luna with their ultimate is the only way you're getting picks. Uh, it's not a good situation at all. Tier 2 tower on the top lane does fall down. TA with a blink dagger pretty much one shot this Shadow Demon. I think at one more point in meld she can, or like at least two shot. And the art style gonna pop off the song of the siren. You get unstoppable into a decent position, try to burst down this enigma. He's not even level six though, so his threat is minimal at this point. He's probably gonna go down and always want to fly, taking a lot of damage from Jackal as well as the Tide Hunter. He's gonna lay down the Static Storm as well as the Kinetic Field, doing as much damage as he can before he does go down. But the Ra uh, Ravage is now up. Yes, there it goes. Magus to take a lot of right clicks from Jackal, but at this point, only with Drum not the strongest. It looks like it is enough. But he got a triple kill before he died. He's still alive, actually. Art style still alive. Also, I don't know actually how he managed to survive that. There you go. Died to the tower. But Unstoppable is going to bag himself an ultra kill and blink out of there. Wow. This TA. Impossible to kill when everyone is a very low level. Even with the Ravage and everything else. He's trying to get a, some spill damage. But he's going to get sent back to the base by Dubas. Kharkiv. Uh, fighting through that Ravage. So much damage. Retry at this point. They're such low level, it's really, really difficult to actually survive that. 
Uh, that, those couple of kills, though, did get them a... Oh. Did he... Is he mad? Well, those couple of kills did give them both a level 6 on that Tide Hunter, as well as the Enigma. They do have almost a level 2 ultimate from the Luna, so their team comp uh, can start to really go into full effect. But they definitely did not expect to be this far behind at this stage of the game. I'm pretty sure, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, you guys know, I mean, like, it's 18 to 5, the towers from Kharkiv are all standing, the gold lead for them, the experience for them is massive, 1-1-10 on the Naga Siren, but 10-0-3 on the TA, who almost has a Desolator 14 minutes in with a Blink Dagger, you don't even see a Blink Dagger 12 minutes in in pubs, this Templar Assassin is having the time of her life, she could carry this game. It goes net onto PGG. Power Shot's gonna line up, do a lot of damage to him. He's gonna uh, decrepify himself, try to save himself from those right clicks. It is gonna work. Force Art Style back after taking a whole lot of tower shots. The car give. They do have the hard carry, getting a whole bunch of kills. Static Storm's Rolls Connect Field gonna trap PGG. Black Hole is up. Shock Shot PGG into the tree. He's gonna allow for Art Style to get that kill. Gonna go for Zever next. Gonna stick his illusions onto him. Doesn't wanna get hit by that Black Hole. Always wanna fly, trying to hide in the trees. He's gonna get surrounded and killed by the Tide Hunter and Luna. Art Style still alive, gonna pick up the Enigma kill. But he still has Jackal as well as the Tide Hunter to deal with. Here comes Duba, uh, Unstoppable though, gonna kill off that Tide Hunter with the Haste Rune as well. Shackled to a tree is Jackal. And he's gonna go down after, oh my god, so much minus armor there between the Riptide as well as the Meld and the Haste Rune as well as a Trap. Shadow Demon is a huge amount of trouble. One hit, two hits. There you go. Probably one hit with Desolator. PGG teleporting back in. He wants the kill, kill on Art Style, but he doesn't have the cooldowns right now. Trap is going to slow him down and allow for Unstoppable to get yet another Ultra Kill. Second Ultra Kill of the game with like an extra triple kill on top of that. Yeah, this TA is level 13, 14 minutes in the game. Has a Desolator flying out to her with the Blink Dagger, with a Magic Wand, with Phase Boots. TA at this point could probably... No, she can't solo the entire enemy team, but she could come pretty darn close. Yay. Probably all a card can need. Like, art style. I mean, like, he has a lot of assists and everything, and ideally you want your Naga Siren to get kills. When you have a TA that's this farmed, uh, it doesn't really matter all that much. Yes. Share the bottle, because sharing is caring. Art style with that regeneration rune. And Unstoppable wants more. He's going to run straight into the Tide Hunter. Let's count how many hits this takes. Okay, actually going to go for a PGG one hit. And then it would have been two hits, you know, we had to prepify, so it's not a fair tally. is going to take a little bit of damage, Demonic Purge as well. He's going to take a Ravage to the face. Static Storm's going to come out and support, though. Song and Siren going to buy him enough time to walk out of there as well. Static Storm has timed out. The Black Hole only has a Mag and Supple blinks right into it as well. PGG uh, actually net going onto the Enigma. One hit, two hits, going to kill him. And PGG has gone down to a Power Shot. Now Shadow Demon only level six. One hit, two hits, three hits from Unstoppable. Gonna get himself yet another set of kills. No one from Kharkiv going down. It's 27 to 7. Not a single tower has been claimed by the retry. And I don't like to count teams out, but honestly, 1603 on TA. I mean, like, great. You can get Manta and everything, but, you know, the Psyblaze will just spill and kill them all in one hit because she has so much damage at this point. 2,500 gold. It's absurd after all these items. They're just going to keep pushing in. No big deal. PGG with another blast. Trying to thin the, uh, thin the push out. But really, look at this. Unstoppable does not give a fuck. Meld's kind of wasted, but he's going to kill that nether ward. PGG getting netted to the floor. Arsal going to close in for that uh, Riptide onto the Shadow Demon. He's going to go down to Chen. One more hit is needed to kill this Tide Hunter. Not going to be enough, but Mag... Might be there with the power, sniper power shot. Is going to land it. Unstoppable. Oh my god. One hitting that Pugna. Yeah. When that happens, you just got to tap out. I mean, like, Luna wasn't there, sure, but... And Ravage wasn't there, but... At a certain point, it's not going to help you. Eclipse getting popped out, but the creep wave is there to tank it up. Completely wasted. Only one beam hitting art style. Dubas actually running into it. What the hell? How? How? I don't know how that guy died, actually. But net and shock shot on two. Weaver is going to take a fall shortly. Shruption going to buy himself a couple of precious seconds. Oh, he's going he's gonna to run out of this. Run, man. Oh, glimpse back into the static storm. Will he get away? 
Art Style is going to probably, no, he's not going to tick. He might tick, actually, to this combo of the Shadow Demon. Yes, it is going to be enough with Tackles, with Jackal's Lucent Beam. It makes out like a bandit. But, it's, but uh, honestly, Karkip could take these casualties because they have so much of a lead right now. 33 for 10. Even Brown is kind of done. They somehow managed to kill the invulnerable Templar Assassin who just buys back after getting a Demon Edge. Yeah, Kharkiv is rolling the money. Oh, look, the first tower from claimed by the retry. Oh, no. Mag, run. He knows Jackal doesn't have that Eclipse, but, you know, Renona doesn't have any mana, so. Swing around. Oh, no, it's a trap. It's a trap of the ages. Here comes a haste rune. One hit, two hit, three hit. Oh, going to blink forward. Going to get that fourth hit off. Boy, that Song of Siren actually makes him invulnerable. And now Zeever is going to get one hit. Two hit. Oh, he needs three hits. God, that's weak shit. The Tidehunter's getting worked over by the Naga Siren. Some cruel fish on fish action. Should never happen. Trap coming out. And a disruption from the Shadow Demon. Trying to buy the Tidehunter a little more time. Pop out the Ravage. Gets three of them. There's no follow up. Tidehunter's gonna go down before he even gets clips back. What is that? The third ultra kill in this game from the TA? It's kind of a shame. Oh, wait. Is he gonna get a Rampage? Rampage! There you go. I was just about to say, it's kind of disappointing. You got so many ultra kills, but no rampage. But there's the GG call. And, hey, retry. How does the curb taste? Yeah, they didn't really stand a chance here. But uh, first game I casted of the retry. I'm not going gonna, gonna to reserve judgment. Everyone has a bad game. But Kharkiv, this Templar Assassin, had a very good game. In like 23-1-5. It's okay, I guess. He's killing everyone. The game is over, guys. Karkiv. Oh my god. See, that's just wrong. Like, it. I feel bad. He's gonna buy a Daedalus in the opponent's base. Whoa. <laughs> I don't. Did that just update? Yeah, that wasn't there before. That's awesome. It's only, like, on some of them. <laughs> but anyway, best banners ever. Everyone from the retry is leaving. Everyone from everywhere is leaving. So we're just gonna wait till we get that score screen. But every single lane survived for Kharkiv, thrives for Kharkiv. And that was enough to give a two shot onto that Shadow Demon from downtown. PGG, kill me, bro. Speed the shit up. Wasting my time. And there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Kharkiv versus the Retry. Did I speed through the score screen? Hope I didn't. This is from Star Series Season 3. So behind. I have pages and pages of replays to cast. So stay tuned for more of them.